In this video, we'll be discussing about the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Where we will illustrate the whole concept in brief manner. Here in this diagram, we have the site on the left, which designates mouth, stomach, small intestine, lumen, followed by small intestine, epithelium, and then circulation. And on the top, we have the carbohydrate section, followed by proteins, and then fats. Let's see the carbohydrates first. In carbohydrates, we have the starch, which is carbohydrate that is found in majority of foods. In mouth, this starch is acted upon by slavery amylase and converts it into oligosaccharides and maltose. And in carbohydrates, we can directly have sucrose and lactose form. Then we see this sucrose and lactose directly gets through the stomach and reaches the small intestine lumen and then into the brush border where they are acted upon by saccharase and lactase and we get the formation of fructose and galactose as shown in the diagram and then finally these sugars enter the circulation on the other hand oligosaccharides directly get to the lumen of intestine and then into the brush border where they are acted upon by dextrinase, glucoamylase and converts it into glucose Furthermore, we also see oligosaccharides can also be acted upon by pancreatic amylase in small intestine lumen and gets converted into maltose, which is again converted into glucose that finally enters the blood circulation. Now getting to the proteins. Here in this diagram, we have the proteins in the mouth, where we do not get any kind of transformation. These proteins reach the stomach and are acted upon by pepsin enzyme. This pepsin enzyme converts it into small peptides in the stomach as shown in the animation. Then these small peptides reach the lumen of small intestine as shown in the animation, where they are acted upon by trypsin enzyme, chymotrypsin and, and carboxypeptidase. And these enzymes convert small peptides into dipeptides as shown in the diagram. Then these dipeptides enter into the brush border where they are acted upon by enzymes like dipeptidase, aminopeptidase and we get the formation of free amino acids which eventually can enter into the blood circulation. Now getting to the fats. Here in this diagram we have the fat in the food which gets into the small intestine and is acted upon by pancreatic lipase and we get the monoglycerides or the free fatty acids as shown in the diagram. Now we see this fat can also be acted upon by lingual lipase and gastric lipase in the stomach where these are converted into pre-patty acids. Then we see these monoglycerides or pre-patty acids combined together in presence of bile salts and we get the formation of muscles. After that the muscles from the small intestine enter into the brush border as shown in the diagram. Within the epithelium of small intestine, these muscles are reconverted into monoglycerides and pre fatty acids. Both these combine together that's monoglycerides plus free fatty acids and we get the formation of triglycerides. Then these triglycerides are combined with phospholipids, cholesterol ester and apolipoprotein B48 to form as the chylomicrons. So we can say triglycerides plus phospholipids plus cholesterol ester and protein or apolipoprotein form as the chylomicrons. These chylomicrons then pass into the lacteals which form as a milky substance known as chyle. Lacteals are lymphatic vessels found in the small intestinal villi. Furthermore, when we have cholesterol, phospholipids and fat soluble vitamins in the food, they are directly converted into muscles in the small intestine which enters the epithelium of small intestine and gets converted into chylomicrons and then they follow the same path into lacteals. So this is the brief summary of digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider support me work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.